With less than 2,000 human visitors a year, it remains wild, difficult to access, largely undiscovered. Yet it's one of the most rapidly changing places on the planet. It is the only known habitat of the polar bear, walrus. And an animal so seldom seen, scientists aren't even sure how many exist. The ribbon seal. The science team, led by doctors Russ Hopcroft and Katrin Eichen, is here to assess the biodiversity of the Chukchi Sea. How many species live here? And in what quantities? What new discoveries are waiting to be revealed? The kingdom of ice is like a reverse ecosystem an inverted coral reef of sorts, with the ice providing a platform for microorganisms that infuse the system with nutrients from the top down. Scientists who study the ice use an auger to collect core samples to examine in the lab. Once extracted, the core is carefully slipped into a protective bag for transport back to a climate-controlled room on the ship. The cores are sliced into thin sections for examination under the microscope. Layer by layer, each core reveals a story. Did the ice melt and freeze again? Is this ice newly formed or several seasons old? What kinds of microbes inhabit the ice? And how does their presence impact the formation or melting of ice, if at all? But what is the world like beneath the ice? The star workhorse of this expedition is an ROV, or remotely operated vehicle with high definition 4K camera capabilities that allows scientists access to a universe inaccessible to the human body. As it plums depths of 1,000, 6,000, even 12,000 feet down, a hidden world begins to reveal itself. Various forms of zooplankton abound. There is a dazzling world of jellies in the Arctic Sea, but many are not ordinary jellies. They are tenophores, or comb jellies. Most jellies move by contracting their bell to move vertically through the water column. Tenophores move by undulating their trademark combs, little hair-like projections that reflect and refract light in a spectacular display. Although only about 150 species of tenophore have been officially identified, scientists on this voyage believe they may have added to the list with several new discoveries and colorful names to go along with them. Mr. Pumpkin. The Vampire Teen. And Liver Lips. As the alien rover continues to glide along in the water world, more denizens begin to reveal themselves. Back on board the ship, a large screen is set up in the lab so scientists can watch all the action in real time. Detailed notes are taken about what animals were seen and at what time. Behavioral observations can be made about how they move and interact with their environment. Important information to help with identification of new species. 
Some animals are collected into specially designed canisters on the ROV and brought on board the ship for closer study and observation. Unloading the ROV is like Christmas morning, with scientists scurrying like excited children to carefully unpack incredible surprises. Somehow, five weeks have gone by, and it's time to head the ship back to port, which will take about a week. During the transits, there are celebrations and time to reflect on all the new information that's been acquired on this monumental journey. Scientists talk about new questions they want to investigate and papers they plan to publish. Now the real work will begin, analyzing volumes of data and getting it ready to present. But for the moment, the team can continue to take in the last sights and sounds of the Arctic and enjoy the journey home.